our president, Mr. Shubhik Chakraborty, to please take his seat on the dais. We will request our guest today, Dr. E. V. Ramana Reddy, IAS, Additional Chief Secretary, Department of Electronics, Information Technology, Biotechnology and Science and Technology, Government of Karnataka. And Mr. Sanjeev Kumar Gupta, CEO of Karnataka Digital Economy Mission. We'd also request Mr. Toshihiro Mizutani, Director General, Japan External Trade Organization. Mr. Arno Basu, Senior Vice President, BCCNI and Advisory Leader, PWC India. Mr. Ravindra Chamaria, Group Chairman, Infinity Infotech Parks Limited. Dr. Chiranjit Bhattacharya, Chairperson of IT Entrepreneurs and E-Commerce Committee, Co-Chairperson of IT Committee, BCCNI, and CEO of YZT Informatics, Private Limited. IS, ACS of Department of Electronics, Information Technology, Biotechnology and Science and Technology, Government of Karnataka to join us. Thank you. So with this, I would request the President of the Bengal Chamber, Mr. Shubhit Chakrabarti and Managing Director of CEO and CEO of Excite Industries Limited to please deliver the welcome address. which we have seen yesterday and today as well. I will not talk to you about statistics of how many startups have been in existence, how many of them have become unicorns and what is the total investment. Those details are available in Google. What I will talk today is about a little bit of the historical context. Today we talk about startups, we talk about innovation. Who was the first person who talked about it? You know, there was a person, there was an economist, Austrian economist called Joseph Schumpeter. 
He was born in 1883 and he died in 1950. He was an Austrian economist and an author. He made three significant contributions in the world of economics during his age. The first one which he did was, he was the person who coined the name of entrepreneur. He did it in German, because he used to speak German. He coined this term, Unter ne Mergeist. This term actually means the entrepreneurial spirit. So today when we talk about innovation, entrepreneur, startup, he was the first person who really talked about it. Second one he talked about is equally important. He followed this up with a hypothesis on business cycles, which we know is a reality today. And the third one, even more important, is the concept of creative destruction. He was the first person to talk about it, which in very simple terms means the old gives way to the new. So when we talk about creative destruction, what do we actually mean? I'll give you a few examples. Invention of the printing press in the 15th century or the steam engine in the 18th century were what we call scumpeterian moments. Following such a moment, scumpeterian moment, life does not remain the same for people at large. And it affects everyone in a profound fashion in ways that leads to creative destruction. He described five different ways or five different types of innovations that come along with creative destruction. New technologies, new products, new ways of producing, new ways of distributing and new business models. Convergence of many such innovation constitutes a Schumpeterian moment. Coming closer home, when the internet was invented 50 years ago, that was one such moment. Life did not remain the same after that. So why am I talking about Joseph Schumpeter? Because this is an event where we are having the startups and the VCs and the angel investors on the same table. Each startup, each young person who dreams of a startup is looking for a Schumpeterian moment. He wants to create that. That's in his, that dream is in his heart. Now, this meeting of the startup and the VCs it is almost like a civilizational conflict. I'll tell you why. For those of you who have some idea about, about the publishing industry, with which I want to draw a parallel, you know, when a writer or a poet writes a creative piece, he puts his heart and soul into that effort. He doesn't think of what will happen before or after. There are people you know, who will isolate themselves for months on end. Someone like Amitabh Ghosh, when he writes this piece. It's a creative moment. The person pours out his heart in that book. Yet, for people who have tried to publish, when you take that first piece of your writing to a publisher, 99% of the cases, he just throws it aside, saying that it doesn't have potential. It is almost like someone has banged you on the head. Because here, you know, you have spent months and years trying to create something which you feel is something really worthwhile, something that can change the world. And then the venture capitalist said it doesn't have much meat in it. <clears throat> it doesn't have earning potential. Show me the cash flow. So this is a clash of creativity with business logic and business sense. And yet one that cannot be avoided because that is the only way a startup can get funded. 
So it is extremely important for startups, people who are into that exercise, to understand that the, at the end of this particular exercise lies a very, very difficult meeting with the, it's almost like the lateral mind is meeting with the linear mind. And one is not able to understand the other. We heard in the morning that Manipal has instituted some courses in entrepreneurship. It is really a very good exercise. However, the passion component or the lateral component of this entire exercise, this cannot be taught. This is something that has to emanate from deep inside you. And it becomes the job then of the startup people who are doing the startup, the entrepreneurs, to be able to convince this passion through very, very cold business logic to the angel funds or the venture capitalists. So this is why it is very important that these meetings take place wherein we have both representatives from both the sides who, so that the youngsters can be better prepared to face the questions which they are likely to face tomorrow. Bengal Chamber, as you all know, was started back, way back in 1833, much before Joseph Trumpeter was even born. And it came into its formal existence in 1883. So this is a very old institution and one in which the early statutes and laws for the country were actually conceptualized, particularly on taxation in those days. Coming to recent times, we have created an ecosystem at BCCI of startups through our own incubation center, which is Webel BCCI tech center. It is a partnership with the government of West Bengal, which has been joined by corporates including Bandhan, Infinity, HPE and others to support the promising startups, mentoring them in various aspects of business including finance, legal, IPR and connecting them with facilitating stakeholders like VCs and other funding sources are our primary focus. So we have a very, very prominent panel with us here today for the second session and I'm sure all of you are looking forward to a very engaging session. Thank you once again ladies and gentlemen for joining us and have a wonderful morning. Thank you so much President sir. We would now invite uh, Dr. E. V. Ramana Reddy, IAS, to deliver the theme address on technology innovation and journey of Karnataka. Thank you once again for joining us today, sir. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. Mr. Subir Chakrabarti, President BCC and I and the MD of Exide Industries. Mr. Sanjay Gupta, CEO of Kedem. Mr. Toshihiro, DG Jetro, Mr. Arna Basu, Senior Vice President BCC and I, Mr. Ravindra Chamaria, Mr. Chiranji Bhattacharya and friends. I was happy to see Mr. Subir Chakrabarti from Exide here because he is setting up a very large lithium ion, lithium ion battery manufacturing company in Bangalore, factory in Bangalore. So I hope it's going on well. If there is anything I can do, for continuing his uh, journey, I would be very much interested to do that. Uh, the topic given to me is technology innovations and journey of Karnataka. Karnataka's journey is almost uh, in uh, technology and uh, innovation and IT is almost more, maybe three decades. Firstly, I thought I would tell you where Karnataka stands, where Bangalore stands, where does innovation in Karnataka stand. And then I will tell you what must have Karnataka done something different from other states to reach this stage. If you take Karnataka as a state, 
we are highly we are progressive states, one of the highly progressive states in the country. Our GDP is third highest in the country. In the country. If you take GST, goods and services taxes, we are number two after Maharashtra. If you take direct taxes, again we are number two. If you take exports, we are almost number one, uh, one or little less than the number one. We export about $125 billion worth uh, goods and uh, services. In the software, okay, each one of you know that we contribute to 40% of India's software exports. But when you take software and services, our exports last year were about $101 billion. And if you take merchandise, it is about $25 billion. These days, everybody asks how much FDI has gone into different states. If you take foreign direct investment into India and Karnataka, a year before, we got 38% of the FDI which came into the country, into Karnataka, which was about 22 billion. These days, everybody talks of ease of doing business, and each state is doing its might to be in the forefront of ease of doing business and simplifying the procedures and processes. So we are ranked by Government of India as one of the top achievers in ease of doing business. When you come to Bangalore, Bangalore is fourth largest technology cluster in the world, not in the country. In the world, it is ranked as fourth largest technology cluster. We always boast of the R&D centers in Bangalore. We have 400 plus R&D centers in Bangalore. Multinational companies call them GCCs, Global Capability Centers. In fact, right after the independence, all the big public sector undertakings came to Bangalore, right from is road to HAL, to NAL, to BEL, to all R&D centers in DRDO, they are in Bangalore. Then lot of global capability centers, 40% of the GCCs which are present in the country are in uh, Bangalore and Karnataka. In fact, many companies have their second largest R&D center outside their headquarters in Karnataka. Like GE has a technology center almost for the last maybe 23 years. Latest one being Boeing, they have taken about 45 acres near Devanali Airport and they are setting up again their largest R&D center in outside their headquarters in Bangalore. 400 of Fortune 500 companies are there in Bangalore. And uh, we always boast of, boast by saying that 1 lakh PhDs work in these R&D centers in Bangalore alone. Bangalore is ranked as one of the six best cities in the world for the expats to live in. And the skilled manpower, every company tells me I am in this, I am heading this department of electronics, IT, PT and science and technology for the last four years. Whoever comes, they will say that the biggest advantage in Bangalore is the skilled manpower. They start with 500 people and scale up to 5,000 people, 10,000 people in less than two, three years. So that is the amount of skilled manpower available. These days, everybody talks of AI. Even in artificial intelligence, Bangalore is supposed to have second largest talent in the world. So because of these region, the reasons, Bangalore, as you know, is the IT capital, science capital, biotech capital, startup capital. So Bangalore is what it is today. If you come to innovation, Last three years, we are rated as number one in the country. Niti Ayo ranks country states on innovation index. So we are number one for the last three years on India innovation index. The DPIIT of Government of India ranks states on startup rankings. There also we are top performer for the last three years. Even if you take the global rankings, Startup Link has ranked Bangalore City as the eighth global startup ecosystem in the world. If you take again FDI into startups, venture capital funding into startups, last year we got more than 10 billion into startups of Bangalore. And the second state which has got the largest after Bangalore, I will not name it, but it got about 2.5 billion. So that much was the gap. And if we see billion dollar companies in the country, more than 105 billion dollar companies called unicorns are there in the country. Out of that, 40 are in Bangalore. First unicorn in the country was from Bangalore. 100th unicorn in the country was from Bangalore. And the fastest unicorn in the country was in Bangalore. 
so this is what karnataka and bangalore is so how did we achieve this what we have done something different from other states so i would like to say as far as i know three four things <coughs> contributed to this first is the forward looking nature of the government of karnataka in fact you will be surprised to hear that in 1978 when many states even did not think of computers karnataka had a karnataka government computer center in the government they used to computerize the payrolls of uh, state government employees so what i am saying is somebody in the government of karnataka thought of computer center in government in 1978 so right from the beginning in fact uh, karnataka government came with a startup uh, it policy in the country for the first time in 1998 and karnataka government set up a separate department of it in 1998 so i used to be the first director of it for 3 and 1/2 years secretariat was started in 98 but department was started in 2000 i was there from 2000 to 2003 middle of 2003 so right from then i am watching almost uh, i have 7 and 1/2 years of experience in it industry in karnataka so what we do differently is the academia industry and government works very closely in bangalore which i have not seen in other cities that has contributed to its growth that because when you work very closely with the industry you will come to know that what are the industry's requirements and you will work around to achieve those uh, requests of the industry in fact uh, 20 in 2000 itself when mr sn krishna was the chief minister he started a concept of vision group we have vision group in it biotechnology startups nanotechnology science and technology so there again all the industry stalwarts are there who keep on guiding the karnataka government number two what we have done something different from other states is that we have come out with sectoral policies even before other states think of sometimes we came out with a policy even before government of india came out with a policy So 98 we came out with an IT policy. Then 2000 we revised, revamped our IT policy, and for the first time in the country we said our policy was titled as IT for the common man. Not only IT industry, but IT should be used for the common man. So lot of e-governance initiatives and digitization of services were taken up. Then we came out with many policies like biotech policy, startup policy, ESDM policy, so on and so forth. number 3 which contributed for the growth of karnataka i feel is because i was asked to talk on journey of karnataka so i thought i will mention this also what made a difference to karnataka and bangalore is the privatization of higher education institutions in the country karnataka was the pioneer in this and ppp models also almost more than 110 years ago roughly But then Maharaja of Mysore called Tata and said, "I will give you land, set up an education institution." So IAC came out in the PPP public with public-private partnership, and I think it has completed 110 or 115 years now, and it is the number one university in the country as of now. Similarly, we have very good institutions right from I not only IAC but very other important uh, national, international level institutes in Karnataka and Bangalore. then we karnataka government priority the privatized engineering and medical education also we have best engineering and medical colleges in the country almost for the last 60 70 years in fact 15 20 years back many states didn't have many engineering colleges train loads of students used to come to karnataka to write entrance exam and get into engineering and medical colleges so that has led to the growth in karnataka and bangalore this higher education and uh, importance given to education next thing what i will say is karnataka has very good labor relations if you see maybe one or two operations here and there may be there but best land order in the country and best labor relations in the country and karnataka is rated as one of the fiscally best many state because if you say that i will give you something when you come to my state i should honor that thing so karnataka always honored whenever it told the concerned industry that we will give these incentives karnataka always honored those incentives and never defaulted in giving incentives to industry which came to karnataka and we have 
governments, in fact, if I remember correctly, after almost last 35 years, no government came back to power in Karnataka, if I know correctly. Every time election, different government came. But in spite of that, the new government has continued the policies of the previous government and has continued to honor those promises given by the previous government and kept those promises. That is what has contributed to the Karnataka's growth in IT and other sectors. Mm. Lastly, these days everybody talks of startups and innovation. So I thought I will also mention about this. Under startups and innovation sector also, we have many, many programs. I will not go into details. But in engineering colleges, almost maybe <coughs> seven, eight years back itself, we have started something called New Age Innovation Network. Then we have sector technology business incubators in uh, higher institutes of higher learning. We have started a program called Elevate, where we give grant up to 50 lakhs to any company, any entrepreneur who has got a very good idea and for converting that idea into a proof of concept, he needs money, seed money. So we were the first state in the country to have started Elevate program and started giving seed funding. And we have a very good venture capital fund called Kitwen, started about more than 20 years ago, which is doing very well. We have set up many incubators and centers of excellence in government sector also. Private sector also, there are many, many in fact, uh, the biggest asset of Bangalore is that we have many, many incubators in private sectors and many, many venture capital <coughs> firms in uh, private sector. But even in government, in 10 to 15 centers of excellence, we have started. With the collaboration, again, my first point I will go to, with the collaboration of industry associations and industry, not just by government. Lastly, we also do some outreach activities. Like we hold an event called Bangalore Tech Summit. Last year was the 25th event, a Silver Jubilee event. This year we will be having a 26th event. Every November we do this. This year it is on 29th, 30th November, December 1st. There we encourage a lot of startups. Last time 550 startups from all over the country participated. We provide them space at a very, very nominal rate and a lot of industries participate. This also helped Karnataka in growing in IT sector. And another thing, not only outreach within the state, but we have a concept of Karnataka Unit for International Cooperation, where we work with various other countries also. We have some kind of arrangement as on today with about 30 countries. We have some, in some places we have tie-ups with the states also, like in Australia, Germany and other places. In fact, just at 10 o'clock in the morning today, we had, I had a meeting with the High Commissioner of New Zealand to India. So that way we do a lot of outreach activities with other countries. We have cooperation with the government to government in those countries, with the education, university to university, startup to startup. We encourage a lot of startups from our country to go to their country and encourage their startups to come here and expose them to VCs. We call it as market access program. So these are the initiatives. I have told you where we stand and what is our journey and what we have done. I feel something different from other states. In fact, uh, before I conclude, I remembered we do roadshows also in other cities when prior to Bangalore Tech Summit. In one of the roadshows in Hyderabad, one fellow asked, uh, why, do you, uh, why do you ask my industry, our industries to come to Bangalore? Then I said, I am from Hyderabad, working for Bangalore. I am happy if both Hyderabad and Bangalore develop. There is a healthy competition between the states now, which is really a good sign. So unlike the traditional industry where if you want to set up an industry, you can set up only if some raw material is available. IT is one industry which can grow anywhere if you take right steps. And one industry where there is no competition between the states, each state can grow. So I feel that... Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industry having this program in Bangalore is highly welcome. So I want Bengal also, West Bengal also to grow and Karnataka and other states in the country to grow together. And uh, now we I stand fifth in uh, global rankings in GDP, the country stands fifth. And soon I am told we will reach number three spot. So let us all work together and make India a $5 trillion economy in near future. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. You do an amazing job, and we would definitely like to constantly learn from you. 
So based on the insights which you shared in a few minutes, we would now like to invite Mr. Sanjeev Kumar Gupta, CEO, Karnataka Digital Economy Mission. Thank you once again, sir, for joining us. Very good afternoon, all of you. Thank you, my uh, call Chamber of Commerce and Industry, to inviting us uh, here and talking to you about the Karnataka story and our additional chief security, Dr. Ramana Reddy, sir, has already shared the journey of the Karnataka in terms of technology and innovations. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to quote one of the words which uh, uh, my mentor and the chairman of the organization that I am representing called Karnataka Digital Economy Mission has said about uh, Dr. E. V. Ramana Reddy. Uh, his name is Dr. E. V. Ramana Reddy. E. V. stands for uh, the energetic, the electrical vehicle without any noise, make impact of journey of the journey. Sir has been there for three decades, ladies and gentlemen. He is a one pioneer who has been standing tall, helping the industry and growing the economy of Karnataka in a strong way. Uh, we are thankful that under his leadership and under his mentorship, we are able to see the results here and take his steps and vision forward uh, by the organizations like Karnataka Digital Economy Mission. Uh, I'll take a couple of minutes, but I want to divide my talk in two parts. One, what is this Karnataka Digital Economy Mission and why it has been set up by the government of Karnataka and industry? And the second piece would be that uh, some of the features that we're trying to build up in a futuristic perspective that what will land up in Karnataka in coming years. And maybe that could be a conversation that we can have. Uh, India's aspiration is about a trillion dollar digital economy. Karnataka is a leading state and has a little bit larger responsibility as compared with the other state to say how we can contribute more towards a trillion dollar. So the industry and the government discussed together and said, let's aim for a higher number of contribution from our side. Maybe somewhere around $250 billion or $300 billion, the range of this that Karnataka state alone can contribute to the Honorable Prime Minister's vision of one trillion dollar digital economy. And if that's an aspiration, that's the aim that we're looking forward then we have to design a mission which can work on the initiative and strategies that can achieve those numbers. And hence the Karnataka Digital Economy Mission was born. And it was born again by the same, uh, the leader who has been the visionary leader for us, Dr. E.B. Raman Eridi, put together a thought process that let's work with industry and design this structure of the organization. The structure is very unique, friends. It has never been seen in India and in Asia as well. The structure is that the, the strategies or the plannings or the, or the change in the mission or the achievement of the numbers can only be done with a strong partnership with the industry and which has been seen for the last three decades in Karnataka. How do we strengthen more and give in? So instead of saying that we will work with an industry and etc. This time Sir told us and said let's say industry will work with the government and we will enable through this process. Shift the gear completely and hence this Karnataka Digital Economy Mission has 51% equity with the industry and 49% equity with the government. 51% equity is represented by the NASCOM, ISA and SOCM as an industry and the 49% with the, with the government. The board of this organization, Section 8 company, comprises of the representative of these as well as the top chief bureaucrats of our departments of industry, uh, finance, uh, skill development, ITBT, all whose matters to grow the digital economy in the state. So these are all top bureaucrats sitting on the board and along with the representative of this. But the beauty is that the OPEX of running this organization is not with the industry. OPEX is completely given by the government as the budget provisions. So you see what's, what's happening is that industry is on the top seat or you can say a, a, a car is driving now, going to drive where the driving seat is available with the industry and the co-passenger seat is available with the government to say support that and design it. Then we designed five different focus areas for us. One, the IT, ITS and GCCs, which you call as sir was talking about and the numbers I was saying. The second one was about ESD and electronic system design manufacturing. And the third one is startups in tech field. These three becomes like a typical company. All of you run the businesses, uh, the p &Ls for us. Every year to year, we need to understand where we are growing on those p &Ls. And for these three panels, we have two different focus areas of enabling one. One is the talent accelerator. How do we create a future talent available for the industry and the ecosystem in the state? And the fifth one is beyond Bangalore. That means creating more Bangalore's outside Bangalore. In fact, I was here a bit early 
and the Honorable Minister was saying that I have to rush to, you know, this part. If you'd have traveled to Mysore or you've traveled somewhere else, he would have felt, uh, you know, the fantastic environment and the travel time as well. So we're creating more Bangalore's outside Bangalore with the focus area. These are the five provisions uh, on which we are thinking. If you want to talk a little bit about it, please tell Thank you. So this is the organization which is doing in the last, uh, you know, two years or so, uh, friends, we have been able to see the results as you're saying. Now, one statistic which Sir has already given, but addition to that, out of 170 billion dollars that country has raised by the startups and tech field, 170 billion dollars, around 68 billion dollars is raised by only Kannada based startups. That's the that's the way that we look at the numbers. And so this is a journey that we are trying to put together. Having said this, we are designing all this strategy. We have these industry anchors available for each this PNL and all those two horizontal layers. So what we design as a strategy to execute in the state for grow of that particular PNL is actually by the industry people. And they help us to design together. So every vertical has those. In the Beyond Bangalore, we have identified first three clusters, which is called as Mesuru cluster, one. Second is the Hubli Belgaon Dharwad. The third one is Mangaluru cluster. And we have created, like, you know, I'm just giving you the little bit of insights and maybe these are good lessons that we are looking at. And many of the states are also seeing that they can, uh, you know, replicate some of these models. We have done is that uh, we have these products called Mesuru, Mangalore, and Hubli, Belgaon, Dharwad. If I go to an industry, an IT, IT is industry, or let's say Mr. Kwati is there, he picked up the Bangalore, but he would have picked up the other regions also, maybe the expansion plan will go through there some other time, is that we make a product of a cluster and we, and we sell the product. I'm a typical seller. Uh, with my background is that I started my journey in the Indian Surgical Services in 1998. I served 11 years in the Government of India and then quit the service and joined the corporate worlds of IBM, Microsoft and Accenture and run their businesses and then came back to the squashy comment where you can create some economic impact on not-for-profit. Why I'm using these words? I'm a seller. Because I'm not a seller from the government side, I'm a seller habit came from the corporate side. I'm a seller, if I has, sell, has to sell a product or, or, a, or a cluster, the product has to have a very clear product specifications. What I'm selling for? Why the industry will buy this product? And has to be very clearly laid down. And one of the important five, six parameters on we work is clearly look at the talent supply which is available for the particular clusters. B, look at the talent availability in terms of the available who is employed right now, what type of job roles are already put in place. The third is current industry ecosystem. And the fourth one is the infrastructure, the IT infrastructure which is available there. And the fifth one is looking at the soft infrastructure. And then we go forward talking about of the you know social infrastructure locking about the policy incentives onto this. Then we create a PNL. And the PNL we says that if you are looking at, let's say, a Bangalore or, or anywhere else in Hyderabad or Chennai, how do you see the results of your PNL and a bottom line impact that you see in operations in Mesuru clusters or in the clusters? And ladies and gentlemen, we have around 25% uh, conservative numbers that impacts your business in savings or bottom line impact. With this, uh, in last uh, almost 24 months, 20, 24 months, uh, friends, we were able to create 36 companies set up their operations in only these clusters, which includes a lot of stuff of good of startups as well. A fantastic journey. We started like a typical company, we're saying that we have only one or two pipeline companies with us in discussing who's who come up. We have now around 150 companies in our pipeline which are having a discussion with us to invest in these clusters alone. So I, what I'm trying to put together is that the journey which Bangalore has seen, the Karnataka has seen in last three decades or two and a half decades is now also getting another steep up while three another growth centers that we are trying to push together is taking a curve in a different direction altogether. And that's the way that we are designing our stuff. Coming to the startups in the tech field, and I want to share this part perspective to you. Our journey which has been seen today is saying that 43 unicorns from Bangalore out of 105. What is the future? The future is the numbers of Sony cons. We have approximately 100 Sony cons in India. Sony cons soon to become unicorns. And out of those, I'm pretty happy to share with you, 47 are from Karnataka, Bangalore. So very pipeline, very strong. So we're looking at those numbers to go forward and say, where will we be landing up in numbers? Having said this, 250 plus incubators and accelerators in the state. Having said this, we have around 21,000 startups in the state out of 95,000, 100,000 startups all over the country. 
the gentleman Mr. Dawani was here is talking about of uh, Mumbai becoming the fintech capital. Friend, I want to just to correct you. Finance capital can be Mumbai. The fintech capital is Bangalore and will remain as Bangalore. <laughs> we are working on this stuff. The 10 unicorns which were born in fintech, most of them were actually from Bangalore. The people like, you know, Razor Pay, they shifted their operations from other part of the country, come to Bangalore and set up the headquarters. And today they are the profitable business. What I'm trying to put together is that the journey of the, has gone through, is it enough for us? Or what is the new thing we're trying to do? We are actually making it a democratization of entrepreneurship journey now. Is, is that we want to create the startup ecosystem much more vibrant in the clusters. Yes, Bangalore is a fantastic offering, eighth topmost center of startup innovations in the world. Can we create a map where Mesur is also on the, on the world map, where the Huli Begon Thawad is on the world map, on the startup and innovation? What is it we need now? Sir has talked about of NAINS Incubation Center. What is the NAINS does? They gives me a student into the idea of entrepreneurship and then the mentor is available to put their idea into a reality some product client that can come up. Any ideas that can be flourished. What I'm trying to do, a funnel of startups are getting generated from these institutions. And these all institutions are nowhere else but outside Bangalore, most of them. Second piece that they're trying to put together is, okay fine, you have an idea, now from a name institution you come out, Sir has set up those scholars Kanak Innovation Centers, incubation centers in these locations, in all these cities they're talking about. What does the incubation center does? Bring those entrepreneurs outside the college and come and set up there, you know, take a support from us and come out with a product line. To add on to this layer, Sir has talked about of an elevate program, where the idea to POC up to 50 lakh grant is available by the government in a proper jury format. So a person can get up to 50 lakhs to convert their idea into a POC. And once it has been done, then the question comes of, if I am a successful product maker, I should go to now Bangalore because there is no accelerator there. How do I accelerate my business? So Sir has recently, last year, Sir has started a program called as Karnataka Accelerator Network. And through this, what we are trying to do is, three mature accelerators from Bangalore and one each in these clusters are getting mentor and mentee relationship and designing a program where the course is going to be working in the clusters as an accelerator and they will be going at 100% funded by the government. Thanks to Sir that who has been able to do this all effort to bring this accelerator network into this part. So from an idea, from a funnel of startups to incubation center to the accelerators which is now in the clusters itself. Next level of fund. How do we give them access to fund? The fund is available. It's in Bangalore, a lot of VCs. I know Sir has talked about a fortune. 400 companies are here, but let me tell you, if you pick up the, all the top VCs in the world, 90%, 85 to 90% VCs have operated from Bangalore, all of them. Can we bring this part of the access of fund closer to the decentralization way towards these places? And that is another journey they're doing. With a lot of discussions, we have started now a new program called as Cluster Seed Fund. What is Cluster Seed Fund is, the first time in India, a Basuru seed fund up to 25 crores has been worked out by the government of Karnataka is, is being approved it and giving a fund for setting up this fund only for entrepreneurs from Mysuru region, only for entrepreneurs from the Mangalore region, a separate fund, a separate fund of Hubli Bilgaon Tharbar. That's the way they're changing the color. So what is going to happen in future? The future is that you will find those vibrant startup entrepreneurs coming out on those regions and putting a thread and saying, I am successful based on this. I give an example in Mangalore. There's a company called Robosoft, which was there 10 years back, and they became almost a pretty good company from Udupi region. They, they were actually serving a lot of products and applications in the field of uh, Apple stores and etc. They were the one of the largest one. They sold their companies to Japanese, uh, you know, company there, multinational company of around 100 million dollars, based out of Udupi, etc. So there is a possibility. There is a great thing that we can do. This is the way they're trying to so cluster seed from become another example for us. Having said this, how do we create a market and a motive and, and the mentorship program for them? So we're trying to push together to create more Thai chapters into this level. Because the Thai chapters are nothing but two fold they bring in industry people and the angel investors. How do we create those Thai chapters? So we have got now in Karnataka, Karnataka is the only state which has the largest number of Thai chapters than in India. We have a Bangalore chapter, we have a Masu chapter, we have a Mango chapter, we have a Hubli chapter. And I'm pretty sure in a couple of years' time, we'll find a Kalburi chapter also coming up shortly. 
But what is happening is you're creating those institutions now where the industry of the local and HNIs of the local region are coming on board on the time. They are learning how to invest. They are also giving their industry experience to market access and along with it. On top of this, SAC has also established around 8 to 10 center of excellences in the country, in the state. And in these 8 to 10 center of excellences, giving us a NASCOM body to run the program, the ISA body to run the center of excellence, they bring the entire network of the industry. This model has been worked out for so number of years, and now we see the, the next level going on, on to the decentralization level. Friends, this is a journey that we are on right now to make the democratization of entrepreneurship a reality, a model which can be looked into by the country to replicate on this. I take this opportunity and thank you so much. I want to just share this part of the two part of the statistics to you and make sure that how many of you are from Karnataka or how many are outside from Karnataka? Okay, so I see a lot of people are from Karnataka. And also those who are not, we are going to come, come out with on the airport at the Bangalore airport. A, a, some sort of a lounge for any entrepreneur from any part of the world, if landing in Bangalore airport, the first welcome address is come to this lounge, let's have a chat. What do you want in this Bangalore? And the Bangalore opens the heart without any culture, without any religion, without any biases, open the heart and welcomes you all in the entrepreneurship of this. Thank you so much. God bless you. Thank you so much, sir, for sharing your wealth of experience and the successful strategies implemented. Coming to Jetro Bangalore, uh, Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industry has been working consistently very closely with her to deliver a special address on Indo-Japan startup collaboration. Thank you once again, sir, for being here. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I am Toshihiro Mizutani from Jetro. Uh, Jetro is a Japanese government-related organization. Um, the, uh, next page, please. Can you slide? Ah, uh, yes, thank you. Yeah, uh, who we are, Jetro. Jetro is, uh, uh, we have uh, offices here in India, five offices. And uh, uh, in a total, in a, a whole world area, uh, we have uh, about uh, seven, uh, 70 uh, offices here. And uh, I am uh, doing a director general in this uh, Bengaluru office. And actually, we have uh, five offices in India, and the one is uh, New Delhi, and uh, Mumbai, and uh, Ahmedabad, and uh, Chennai, and uh, Bengaluru. And uh, we have uh, four Japanese staff here in Bengaluru office. And uh, except me, uh, three Japanese uh, uh, young women, uh, age 20. So uh, I, as you see, Bengaluru is a very cosmopolitan city. It's very easy to uh, very a friendly city, so uh, uh, except me, a uh, young lady can live very easily. So, um, next page, please. Yes, uh, as a Japanese government organization, we are supporting uh, several activities here uh, in Japanese companies. And we have a one-stop window for various queries from Japanese companies interested in, in investing in India. Uh, we also work on the behalf of 1,400 Japanese companies in India uh, to propose enhancement of business environment to the uh, Indian government. Uh, for Japanese companies in India, uh, we give uh, advices, uh, consultation to the Japanese uh, companies in India in a daily basis. And uh, we work with uh, legal accounting firms in India uh, to for those who need to professional queries. Also, uh, we collaborate uh, with JCCII, Japanese Chamber of Commerce uh, and Industry in India. And actually, we have uh, Bengalu Chamber of Commerce Industry in Japanese organization as well uh, to compile proposal for Japanese environment uh, enhancement in India. And uh, as you can see in the map, in uh, Karnataka states, we have a big investment from uh, Toyota Group and uh, Fanux and uh, or Honda or Sony Groups. Yes. Um, and also we work closely uh, with the state government in India 
for our mutual goal to assist Japanese companies to invest in India. And we are here in Karnataka, so it means a, a state government of Karnataka. So we work together with uh, state governments to collaborate as a partner organization in investment summits hosted by the state governments, including organizing country pavilion and seminars. And also we support uh, business missions, uh, roadshows in Japan, uh, hosted by the state governments. And we also organize investment seminars in Japan. So uh, nowadays, many uh, minister level of each uh, state government are coming to Japan. So we just uh, organize such a big event in uh, Tokyo or Osaka or other uh, cities in Japan. Yes, uh, also we support uh, Indian companies to invest and uh, start business in Japan. And we support creation of a collaboration between Indian startups and uh, Japanese companies. And uh, for the detailed support menu, here uh, we have uh, JBridge. Uh, we facilitate collaboration uh, between Japanese and foreign uh, companies. In here is a uh, Japanese company and Indian companies. So business alliances, including technical uh, cooperation, uh, joint R&D uh, or uh, M&A. And we also support uh, cross-border open innovation for accelerating uh, digital and green uh, transformation. Yes, and uh, for this today's uh, my topic, uh, Indian-Japan uh, startup uh, collaboration. Yes, our government of India and Japan uh, agreed the Japan-Indian Digital Partnership in uh, 2018, five years ago. So we promote a collaboration between the Japanese and Indian startups ecosystem to foster innovation. The name of the of supporting menu, another menu is a Global Acceleration Health. We establish uh, this uh, uh, global acceleration hub to support the collaboration and the expansion of Japanese startups in partnership with the uh, system in India. We also support a connection between startups and the government accelerators, incubators, or academia, etc. And uh, this page is uh, one example of uh, Japanese startups in India uh, doing business here. Um, the industry area is a uh, wide range, like a uh, drone or agri-tech, uh, robotics or AI, and uh, uh, e-bike, etc. And nowadays, uh, uh, many Japanese startups are eager to uh, come business to AI sectors. And uh, these are the detailed uh, company name, startup company. Um, collaborate with uh, Indian uh, startups. So, for example, drone is AC. SL and L Arc, where agri tech sector is Sagri and Leaf. Yes, and uh, sometimes our network is uh, a bit limited uh, to make a collaboration to make a collaboration between Japan and India. So we are doing a MOU uh, for these related uh, lo uh, local organization, like as uh, you see. Uh, Madamuda Shah Medical Foundation, uh, C Camp, or BBC, or NASCOM, or Michelio. For those uh, sectors, medical, or uh, deep tech, or mobility, so um, uh, we can easily connect with the uh, Japanese startups to with, uh, with Indian uh, startups. But uh, sometimes it's not uh, enough, so we need to cultivate other uh, organizations as well. Yes, and uh, I want to introduce one more activity, the uh, job fair uh, in the uh, in Indian Institute of Technology, uh, IIT Hyderabad. Uh, since uh, 2018, uh, JETRO has been holding job fair uh, in Hyderabad. Uh, we are here in Bengaluru, but uh, we coverage area is a uh, state uh, of Karnataka as well as uh, Telangana. That's why we are uh, collaborating with IIT Hyderabad as well. And uh, uh, last year, 2022, uh, the job fair was held at the campus of uh, uh, IIT Hyderabad after uh, finishing the COVID. And uh, about uh, uh, 
12 Japanese startups have participated in our activity because uh, uh, many Japanese companies are now struggling to employ a very high skilled talent in, in, within in Japan. Um, by 2030, about uh, 800,000 IT technicians uh, will be shortage in Japan. That means uh, we need uh, very young talent uh, from uh, India. So that's why we are doing such kind of a job fair uh, in uh, India. So uh, past uh, um, participate company is uh, Rakuten or Merukari or Sony, Denso, Toyota, such kind of big corporation are now uh, really keen and interested in uh, uh, hiring uh, young talent in, in Japan. And uh, this is uh, for your uh, reference. Uh, I want to introduce uh, now percentage of industry in number of Japanese companies in whole India. It's not in uh, all, not only Karnataka, but also this is a pan India. And uh, as you see, uh, the right side is an, about 49 percent is a manufacturing sector, and uh, uh, 16 percent is a, a wholesale and 6% uh, is information and communication industry. And uh, as you see, uh, almost half of the investments uh, account for um, manufacturing sector. The uh, automotive or uh, renewable energy, environment related business, and the food processing. Yes. And, uh, uh, currently in Karnataka states, uh, because of the, this city is a uh, uh, hub of the IT or innovation center, but uh, at this moment uh, we are accepting many, many investments from uh, Japanese manufacturing uh, sector, like uh, as I see um, Toyota or Honda or Sony or even uh, machine tool industry as well. And uh, this is also I want to introduce a Japanese industrial township J we call JITS. And uh, um, many of the JITS are located in the north or uh, Chennai area, but uh, I want to uh, spec uh, introduce uh, one uh, Japanese uh, industrial township here in the Karnataka state. It is uh, located in uh, Tumukur, and uh, we strongly uh, collaborate with the state government, and we are currently promoting more investment from Japanese companies. And at this moment, in this Tumukur area, we are inviting uh, three Japanese companies, uh, including uh, Toyota uh, Brother Industry and the uh, Hitachi Astemo companies. And those, hopefully, one more Japanese company will increase here in the uh, Tumukur area. And uh, yes, for the retail sector, I want to introduce uh, our activities. Uh, uh, yes, uh, retail sector is sometimes uh, some restrictions by the uh, uh, Indian country, but uh, we are struggling to cultivate this uh, huge market. So uh, as you may or may not see uh, Uniqlo or Muji, such kind of uh, retail shops are uh, opening uh, recently here in India. And uh, hopefully in Bengaluru area also, um, this uh, uh, Japanese uh, retail shop will be increased here. And uh, I want to introduce one Koko uh, Ichibanya. Uh, this is actually a curry uh, food uh, restaurant of Japanese curry. Uh, of course, India is the most famous uh, country in uh, eating the curry. But uh, in Japan as well, uh, about 100 years ago, it uh, come from uh, UK, and we have a Japanese curry. So uh, Koko Ichibanya is uh, the biggest curry chain, uh, franchise uh, chain in Japan. And uh, this Ichiban can, Ichibanya came to India. It's very, very challenging because the taste of the curry, Japanese curry, is totally different from India. So uh, the Ichibanya is uh, now very difficult time to introduce and uh, to make me more Indian people to introduce the taste of Japanese curry. Yes, and the uh, last page is uh, I want to introduce uh, to focusing on the Japanese companies' activities here in Karnataka states. 
Yes, we have uh, about 5,000 uh, base in Tang India. Actually, 4,901 Japanese companies based here. And uh, Karnataka State uh, consists of uh, 537 Japanese companies based. So, uh, the fourth largest accumulation in Pan India. And uh, the number is uh, actually very increasing uh, in, in the Karnataka State. And, uh, yes. The last one is uh, just for your reference is uh, to introduce uh, Japanese companies uh, located in the uh, Bengaluru area. Uh, actually, uh, state government prepare uh, many um, industrial zones like uh, uh, JITS, Vasanta Narasapura or Dodaparapura, uh, Dabaspet. Uh, there are many uh, industrial zones. Yes, and uh, uh, yes, in a Bidadi area, uh, we have uh, the largest uh, Japanese uh, manufacturing accumulation. So Bidadi area is uh, mainly investment from uh, Toyota Group. Actually, we have uh, many, many Toyota Group production sites uh, in uh, Bidadi area. Yes, that's my conclude uh, my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We will now invite uh, Mr. Anna Basu, advisory leader at PwC India and senior vice president of the World Chamber of Commerce and Industry to share his thoughts on the way forward. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's obviously a pleasure and a privilege to be here as part of the Bengal Chamber. Uh, the Bengal Chamber of Commerce and Industries, you know, wants to take this initiative forward. Uh, we are always looking at how we can add value to the startup community across regions. Uh, we've had, we learned from the uh, Honorable Minister in the morning and also from uh, Dr. Reddy uh, how some of these things need to form an ecosystem, need to form a hive, need to be taken as a project, not as you know a matter of chance. And I think uh, Dr. Reddy's session was really uh, insightful in how, you know, when we look at a result, we sometimes forget the hard work which has gone behind it. Uh, but I think when you look at startups, you know, some of the concern areas of startups are also very unique. To cater to a large number of startups, it is important to collaborate. It is important to bring very broad expertise across the table to the startups. And we have tried a bit of that with Webel, with the Webel VCCI Tech Incubation. Uh, the Bengal Chamber has been working in collaboration with them and bringing quite a lot of startups, uh, trying to mentor them, trying to incubate them and expand their network, and you know, sort of mutually felicitate uh, the broader ecosystem. But I think uh, when you think of uh, startups, the first thought which comes is investors. And we had a broad base of investors in the morning. The investors play a very important role in the startup growth. And uh, you know, whether you look at VCs, whether you look at the angel investors who came here from Bangalore, from Mumbai, from Calcutta, uh, I think some of them who joined us, they talked about you know what they look at. Yesterday's session was also a lot of about what they look at. And the Bengal Chamber would want to continue this journey to bring the investors to the startups. But I think if you look at some of the other things which are required, apart from just the investors, you need a exchange program. You need startup exchange programs to exchange ideas. You look at mentoring. I think one of the things which we have learned over the years is that you know it is not just important to get the investors. It's also important to mentor the startups in the early days to actually make them ready for the investors. You know, in yesterday's uh, conversations also you would have seen that the maturity to handle an investor query is also something which needs to be mentored. And then we would need to have training programs on very critical areas around, you know, the supply chain, around omni-channel, around, you know, intellectual property rights, uh, around taxation, around governance. Many of these can actually make or break a startup if they're not having access to these uh, ideas and access to some of the leading uh, practices 
very early in their journey. And of course, you know, when you look at evaluation of the startups, the valuation, what kind of valuations we are coming in, how they are accessing capital, availability of a capital is sometimes, uh, you know, more talked about than what you do with the usage of the capital. And some of these are very important things. Policy advocacy with, you know, research content becomes very, very critical. So I think the chamber obviously, uh, you know, has the focus to go ahead with this. Uh, we have the rest of the day to talk about some of these. Just after this session, we would have uh, a startup founder share with us some of his stories about what worked and what did not work, how his own journey made him what he is today. And I think these sessions would tell you that the way forward is only brighter as we heard that the unicorns and the sunicorns, uh, you know, the numbers are in hundreds, but probably in about two, three years time, the numbers would be in thousands. And of course, Bangalore would continue to be a capital of all the unicorns and sunicorns of the world. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a privilege. The way forward is very, very bright. Uh, I would request you all to stay the day and, you know, learn from some of these discussions. Thank you. Thank you so much. I understand that Dr. Reddy has another engagement. I would request uh, the President of the Bengal Chamber, Mr. Shubhi Chakraborty, and the uh, Senior Vice President, Mr. Arnav Basu, to please present him. Tokens of appreciation from the Chamber. I must mention the Uttorio, it is of Thonekhali Shari. Thonekhali Shari is a GI tech product of Bengal. Dr. Bhattacharya, if you please con I mean, con continue the session. Yes. Mr. Ravindra Chamani, Group Chairman, Infinity Infotech Parks Limited, to deliver the industry address, please. Thank you so much, sir, for being here. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is an absolute honor and delight to be standing here amidst all of you and to be speaking today at a Tech e Summit organized by the Bengal Chamber of Commerce. Thank you all so much for being here. At the outset, let me start with a confession. One, that many of you sitting in this room may be used to by now. I am quite in awe of Bangalore's stunning journey of having earned the well-deserved level of being India's startup capital and Silicon Valley of Asia or being truly global and innovative metropolis. Your city has home to the Indian Institute of Science, India's premier science institute and tall government institutions such as ISRO, Hindustan Aeronautic Limited and DRDO. All these perhaps instill a culture of engineering excellence here. That engineering excellence met the entrepreneurial dare of companies such as Infosys and Bipro who decided to set up camp in the city and hire Indian programmers. Success because success and sowing of entrepreneurial seed led to a thriving, growing relationship between the East and West. The rest, as they say, is history. Today, Karnataka has emerged as a pivot pivotal player in driving the nation's economy. Among the six major cities that together account for 15.3% of the Indian economy output, Bangalore has exhibited remarkable growth consistently 
surpassing other cities with double digit expansion over the past 3 years but why i am stating all this here since all of you not only know that this know this but have been the drivers of this journey it is the likes of you that have made it happen precisely because of that as i see it i am speaking not just to a room of full of pcs pcs and huge talent but also to the parties pool of incubators accelerators mentors coaches entrepreneurs consultants academia and more and so i am standing here hoping will rub off some of your signs into us but who is this us my name is <laughs> ravindra chamaria and i happen to head the infinity group which is headquarters in sector 5 in kolkata our is a roughly a two decade old story from the time when the sector 5 area literally considered to be the back or beyond of the city to a time when today sector 5 is virtually a cbd of calcutta and is throbbing with the talent energy and enterprise and since infinity was one of the first startup shop in sector 5 we have been created for having catalyzed the it developments and footprint in city today infinity houses formidable brand of companies such as gny kpmg pwc lnt mindtree and many others today we have well and firmly catalyzed in these two decades also sector 5 has transcended its status as the largest it hub in eastern india to consume the role of dynamic economy driver it has served as the catalyst for the comprehensive development of greater kolkata in compassing areas such as salt lake rajarhat new town eastern eastern bypass and bantam this remarkable expansion has not only stimulated progress but also brought prosperity and recognition to the region but we would like to go beyond this and we firmly believe we have what it takes in terms of infrastructure intellectual capital talent to make that happen as you know every third it professional in your city has his her roots in calcutta besides our preparedness to raise the bar we also enjoy some strategic advantages such as being the gateway of the east as well as offering low cost all talent a great work life balance and some world class education institutions what we do need however is the expertise the mentoring and the sheer vision that only technocrats <coughs> such as yourselves can offer we need your guidance so that our business acumen innovative vigor go a notch higher and further we need your hand holding in helping us make our existing startup ecosystem more robust and comparable to the best of the world in creating an open inviting atmosphere and culture that encourage a popuri of ideas and excellence i stand here warmly extending an invitation to each one of you to come and spend some time in our city to see how far we have come and navigate us to the next level i firmly believe that with bangladesh hand holding and the states marching together kolkata is poised to contribute richly to the great indian dream of our country emerging as a formidable dollar seventy economy by 2030 i will wrap up by thanking all of you once again for being here and letting you know that we shall be awaiting your arrival in the city with bated breath have a good afternoon thank you very much thank you so much sir we would now like to conclude our session uh, our sincere gratitude to the audience for the patience and sincere gratitude to the learned panelists regarding the role of the it entrepreneurship committee as uh, arnab had very rightly pointed out various points regarding mentoring startups uh, connecting with investors there's only one line that i would like to add is that a key objective of our committee at bengal chamber of commerce and industry remains 
to create convergence between the investor community on one hand and the startup and entrepreneurs on the other hand and that convergence needs to be beyond geographical boundaries. So one key initiative taken from our end is to break those geographical boundaries and ensure that collaboration which Arnav was speaking about. Thank you so much. Uh, Angana, could you take over? Yeah, I would now request uh, Mr. Shubit Chakraborty and Mr. Arnav Basu to please uh, present token of our appreciation to Mr. Sanjeev Gupta. Mr. Ravindra Chamari and Dr. Chiranjit Bhattacharya to please present token of our appreciation to Mr. Toshihiro Mizubani. So with this we are closing the inaugural session and we are moving on to the next session that is five